So the first thing we want to do is log into our dedicated server. We want to go start in the start bar. You're going to type CMD, which gives us our command prompt. In there, you're going to type ipconfig, all one word, space, forward slash, all. This is going to give us all of our IP information that we need to make our server a static, give it a static IP. We're going to look at our IPv4 IP address. We're going to look at our subnet mask, our default gateway, and our DNS server. Most home networks, DNS and default gateway will always be the same IP address. So once you have that recorded or you can leave the window open, we're going to go to settings, network and internet, ethernet, change adapter options, right click on our adapter, go to properties, and in there you're going to look for the IPv4 address. And what you're going to see is it's obtaining an IP address automatically, which is our DHCP. We want to change that and we want to put in the IP address that we saw in our command window in our subnet mask usually tabbing uh, once you put in the IP tab it'll automatically fill in the subnet mask for you. Then we're going to put in our default gateway and our preferred DNS server. Again those two IP addresses are probably the same. Once that's done we're going to tell it OK and we're going to close out all the other windows. And now we have assigned our server a static IP. So we're going to go to our router and we're going to do our port forwarding. Your port forwarding in my router as well as your router, whatever router it is you're using, port forwarding will always be under the firewall settings because that's the function of a firewall. So we're going to go to port forwarding. Now these menus and your menus may and or will be different, but all the concepts are exactly the same. So here it says select a device. Now. This is also the target or the host or whatever term your particular router uses. This is where we want the packets or our ports to be forwarded to. And that's going to be our dead server, of course. Now, public IP address, you don't have to worry about. The firewall already knows what that is. If you have a particular multi-homed router that has multiple um, public IP addresses, then you may have to worry about that. But in most home routers, you don't. That's not something you have to worry about. So here it says select an application, my seven days to die uh, and some other applications. Right now it's set to custom. Yours may or may not have this drop down menu, but we're going to create a new understand these are called rules so your router your firewall may name it something different when it says select application it may simply be asking you is there a preset rule like some of these aim to talk it has preset rules in this case we're using a custom because we're creating our own so your menu may have you create your own rule and I want to call this first one we're gonna do Conan TCP so our TCP address for Conan is going to be our 27015 that's all you need for that TCP rule and we're gonna add it the next one is going to be our UDP let's assign that one. there we go even I'm fallible sometimes I make mistakes it's just the way it is so now that these rules are added, you'll see we've got our seven days to die set up the same, similar, the same way. Uh, it has our TCP port, it has our UDP ports, Conan, the same thing. Uh, you do notice, and one of the things you want to pay attention to is that the, none of the ports for this, for the seven days game conflict with the ports for co the Conan game. In most, if not all cases, they will never be the same. But you always want to make sure that they are not simply because you cannot have two games using the same ports. Okay, so while we're on our dedicated server, uh, let's go into our dead server directory. We're going to create a couple of folders in here. One we're going to just call simply Conan Exiles. This is where we're going to use the Steam CMD install. And you notice I use underscores in my directory names. The next one is going to be our, I'm going to call it Funcom Conan Exiles. And again, all with underscores. So with that done, we're going to pull up the Steam command commands to load Conan Exiles because I don't want to have to remember them. And we're going to run our Steam CMD exe file and simply copy and paste our commands in there. Tell it where our directory is in the dead server Conan Exiles file and the app ID for the install. This does take several minutes. I'll show you here in just a second as well why I use underscores folder names. 
Jobs. Once that's finished, you'll see in my updater bat, I don't have any quotes. If you look at all the directions on the internet, directions tell you to use quotes for folders that have spaces. If you don't have spaces in your folder names, when you run these little batch files, you don't have to have the quotes, which means you do less typing, which also means you make less mistakes. And that's the reason I do that. And like with our seven days to die, the Conan Exiles icon is in our install we just did. And you'll browse to it, Conan Exiles, tell it to open OK. And we'll do the same thing with our updater. And that's it for the Conan Exiles Steam command install. For this install, we're going to go to the Funcom website and go to their dedicated server launcher webpage. We're going to install version 1.1.2. I have not tested their beta, but you're more than welcome to try it. At the top of the page, um, you'll find the index and you're going to go to uh, number two, which is the installation. You're going to click on the 1.1.2. Your web browser will give you an error or a message that says this is an executable file and could be harmful. Do you want to keep it or not? And of course, yes, you do. So it's going to download into our downloads and I'm going to cut it out of there. And we're going to put it into our dead server, Funcom Conan Exiles. And this is where we're going to launch this utility. It does take a few minutes for it to fire up. But once it comes up, we're going to be able to test our ports. You'll see when it comes up, over on the middle right side there, there's a test the communications button and it tests all the ports to make sure the port forwarding that we did in our router, in our firewall, is correct. And of course it is. This does log into Steam CMD. I use in the user I field, I put anonymous because Steam allows it. And then we're going to fill in the name of our server, which I simply call it dead server. And it's going to ask you for the uh, password, for the game password, which I just said is my password. And it's going to ask you for the admin password, which allows you to do cheats. And I just make those both the same for simplistic reasons. I don't want to have to keep remembering a dozen and a half passwords. I do do backups for my Conan Exiles. So every time I shut off my game, it backs up my save files. Um, just in case of corruption or something, I can always pull it down or if the game crashes, I can always pull from previous save. So once we've done all of this, we've got all our fields that we think are, that we need. I'm not going to read them all to you because I, I assume you guys know how to read. We're going to go ahead and launch this. Now when we launch it, what it's going to do is it's going to log into Steam anonymously. It's going to do our app update. It's going to do all those things that we did manually in the first install. And it's going to load all of that in the Funcom Conan Exiles directory where we pasted this utility into. This does take a long time to do. So once it finishes, um, I like to create a shortcut on the desktop. And that's pretty much it. Now you've got your own Conan Exiles dedicated server. And that's it for today.